Splendid, magnificent, dazzling. Incomparable. Sturdy and resistant, I hope. Oh, that suit of clothes is going to last a lifetime. Uh, I've only been appointed First Council for ten years. <laughs> what a pity there isn't a bigger mirror so that you could see how well it suits you. Here's my mirror. Well, what do you think? Oh, but you look. You look. Well, I must be very well turned out for my pretty mirror to cloud over. <sighs> is we, we know you is still here? <laughs> Uh, you know who is waiting for you next room in front of the fire? I think in another life it must have been a cat. A cat? Huh? I'd say a cobra. Shh! I'm about to support you without hesitation. Uh, you mean I support him, which is only normal for a cripple. Shh! Hmm? No. Don't say anything, Talion. I've already been showered with all the compliments you can imagine. But I have no illusion that this fine suit of clothes won't be enough to reassure our neighbors that France has finally put the revolution behind her. True, the right. European courts fear the strength of our army is less than the strength of our ideas. Therefore, we must demonstrate that we are civilized people once more. An aristocrat, a real aristocrat, who knows how to behave incidentally, yet with princely grace, would give us prestige. So you were the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Directoire, the First Consul reappoints you to that office. I suppose I should feel flattered that you consider me to have princely grace, but I would display more of it if your choice was based on my skill at negotiating. Negotiating what? Austria recaptured Italy from France while I was in Egypt. And we either accept the loss of Italy or... Or which war on Austria? I usually believe the worst can be avoided. War is not the worst, Alain. The worst would be allowing them to treat France like the village idiot of Europe. The one who is slapped and then says thank you. What do you know about war? You've you never been to war. Alas, a soldier who can neither attack nor, more especially, flee in sufficient haste is a liability. Otherwise, I might have pursued a military career. You, General? General Talleyrand? Perhaps you envy my glory. You can share it if you're loyal to me. Sire, I wish only to serve you. You bow as you say that, so one can't see whether your eyes support your words. Man was given speech to disguise his thoughts and words to disguise his eyes. Don't trust anything or anyone. Louis Rodrer, whom I have appointed Consular of State because he served me well and will continue to do so. I'm delighted to meet you, sir. Welcome to the Tuileries, madame. I hope you will like it here. Are you coming? Antoinette's apartments. Not very cheerful, I'm afraid. Price of power. I hope they've changed the sheets. Don't be silly. It's morbid. If you must leave in the Tuileries, can't we take a different apartment? This one feels haunted. Superstitious nonsense. Once it's refurnished to your taste, you'll be happy. And whenever you need a change, we can go to Malmaison. We need a change right now. Let's go. No, don't be childish. Maybe tomorrow. 
When we got married, I could ask you anything. And you always said yes right away. Now it's always maybe tomorrow. You love me less, Bonaparte. I'm sorry, maybe we should have thought of redecorating the rooms she before. Accused her. It would be a sorry set of affairs if my wife is the one person in France to contest my authority. <laughs> Show me where my study is. Please. I have an article published in a newspaper saying I'm against powdered wigs coming back into fashion for men. It's ludicrous. Have they finished an exact account of what's left in the state coffers? 167,000 francs. Scandalous. I'm sure there's 10 times that amount in the pockets of each former member of the Directoire. This means France is bankrupt. We will need to bring in several million francs this year. The Minister of Police. Ah, Fouché. Come in, Fouché. You're not an ordinary minister anymore. You're my minister. But I expect from you a flawless efficiency. But yet, I hear you dislike ruthless measures. How do you define ruthless? Arresting, imprisoning. When we imprison a man, it's usually because he has broken the law. In other words, when it's too late. Personally, I'd rather prevent him from committing a crime. But you have to know to prevent it. Huh? Yes. Know everything about everyone. Oh, so you claim to keep watch on the whole of France? I have my informers. This system has saved your life many times over. And you didn't inform me? The bombs were all found in time. Bombs? Who planted them? The Royalists, with England acting as their banker. A bomb is more expensive than a vial of poison. Or a dagger. So, this is what politics is like? No, this is what hatred is like, Monsieur le Premier Consul. Hatred. You're not dressed. But the carriages are waiting in the courtyard. Have you forgotten we're going to the opera? No, but Bonaparte is working. And when he locks himself up in his studies, God knows when he'll reappear. Oh, but you go ahead. Go ahead to the opera. Ask Muriel Caroline to chaperone you. Thank you very much, but I don't need any chaperoning. But you're only 17, Hortense. And at your age, a girl can easily have her head turned, and men, you know. And what if my head is turned? Bonaparte has other plans for you. Nothing is settled, of course, but... He is wishing for you to marry his brother, Louis. Louis? But have you ever looked at him? Or spoken with him? He's ugly and miserable. My, my child, if the First Consul is asking for you to marry him... The First Consul shall look after the affairs of state and leave me alone. And what's more important, he shall look after you. But he loves me as much as he loved me on the first day we've met. Then let's hope that what everyone is waiting for will finally happen. And what do you mean by that? You know very well. People are surprised you haven't borne him a child. Oh. But I will, soon. Who knows, I might be pregnant now. This morning, I got dizzy. Don't fool yourself, you're not pregnant. And you may never be. But what is the matter with all of you? Why is it that you all think that I'm barren? You and your brother Eugène. I gave you birth, didn't I? Forgive me, Mama, but that was a long time ago. Six thousand Frenchmen fell at Marengo. They transformed what everyone predicted as a defeat into a victory. Thanks to Marengo, a part of Italy regained her freedom. I intend to turn this victory into a splendid victory, which is why we must have a monument commemorating the battle. This calls for a triumphal arch. No, gentlemen, a fountain. A fountain? 
But it's, it's so ordinary. There's nothing splendid about a fountain. Paris lacks water. Paris is dirty. Paris is dying of thirst. Every time Parisians draw water from this fountain, they will feel a moment of gratitude toward the men who fell at Marengo. Percy, you'll do the drawing. And Fortin, you will carry out the sculpture. I'm in conference, my dear. Gentlemen, the First Consul will see you tomorrow. Tonight is Christmas Eve. No one discusses profane matters on Christmas Eve. Just who do you think you are? Your wife. We've planned to go to the opera, and that's what we're going to do. No, okay. Certainly not. Go on your own and have work to do. I want us to be seen together. Paris is buzzing with rumors that are very painful for me, and your presence at my side will quell them. What rumors? They say that you reproach me for not having a child, and that you intend to get another woman pregnant whom we would pay to give up the baby at birth. Preposterous. Come, I'm longing for some music. No, music will do nothing for me tonight. Well, then don't listen. I will bend close to your ear and whisper little exciting things. You devil. Shh. Don't tell anyone. It's Christmas Eve. 